1,347 hours deep in occupied Zaporizhia. The order is given. 12 Ukrainian drones scream towards a Russian ammunition train at nearly 100 clicks an hour. But the operators controlling them, they've just been made. The first Russian 152 millimeter shell lands 800 meters away, close enough to shake the dust from their ceiling. The Russians detected them the moment they powered up. 48 brushless motors spinning up at once lit up their sensors like a stadium light. The operators have a choice, a brutal one, abort and live, or continue the mission, knowing they have maybe 12 minutes to target, and the Russian artillery has maybe three to find them, they choose to continue. A BTR spots the swarm and opens up, tracers fill the morning air, the formation splits, four high, four low, four straight through the middle, rounds rip through empty space, but the Russians are missing the key piece of intel, the thing that changes everything. Each of these drones is trailing a fiber optic cable thinner than a fishing line, while 10 kilowatts of Russian jamming floods every frequency with noise, these cables carry data at the speed of light, completely immune. That $10 million electronic warfare vehicle down there, it might as well be a paperweight. The artillery finds their position and starts pounding it. But the Ukrainians were ready for this. They're in three separate bunkers, spaced 500 meters apart. And that distance is a work of cold mathematical genius. A 152 millimeter shell has a lethal radius of 300 meters. At 500 meters apart, even a direct hit on one bunker leaves the others untouched. The Russians could get one, maybe two, with a miracle shot, but never all three. The math doesn't lie. Eight drones would always get through. The second round lands 600 meters out. They're getting closer. Through the lead drone's camera, the target is clear now. Black diesel smoke from the train. It's entering a kill zone the Ukrainians studied for weeks. A two kilometer straight shot through open terrain. The window lasts exactly 97 seconds, then the third round, 450 meters away. This one changes everything. Shrapnel, moving at 1500 meters per second, finds its mark. The tiny cables for drones two, five, and eight are severed. Instantly, they switch to backup radio control. And just like that, they're naked vulnerable to the jamming that was just useless noise. The operators in Bunker 1 make the call, continue the mission. As they grab their gear to relocate, a fourth shell slams into their old position. But they're already gone, sprinting through a tunnel to a backup bunker. The artillery has to start its deadly math all over again. Now, the electronic warfare vehicle detects the swarm. It unleashes its full power. 10 kilowatts of raw electromagnetic energy, enough to kill every signal for 30 clicks. The three drones on radio backup, they go dark instantly. Screens turn to static. But the other nine keep coming. Their signals are impossibly clean. The Russian operator is confused, furious. How are they still transmitting? The beautiful, brutal irony. The jamming is indiscriminate. It's deafening the Russians too. A BTR crew tries to radio a warning, nothing but static. They blinded themselves, trying to blind the enemy. The train engineer, panicking, slams the throttle. He pushes the 4,000-ton train to its brutal limit, 56 kilometers an hour. But acceleration creates a new problem. Every click faster shifts the intercept point. The Ukrainian operators are recalculating on the fly, burning precious battery power with every correction. A BTR gunner has exactly eight seconds to engage. He needs to lead the drones by 15 meters. He opens up 800 rounds a minute, but the drones aren't flying straight. They're jinking randomly up, down, left, right, like drunk hummingbirds. Every single round misses. Then the big gun enters the fight, a Pantsir air defense system. It's designed to kill cruise missiles and fighter jets. Its twin autocannons open up, firing 5,000 rounds a minute, setting a wall of shrapnel in the sky. Drone six vanishes in a fireball, Three seconds later, Drone 11 is gone. The seven survivors scatter. The Pantsir gunner has a two-second choice. Shoot the high group or the low. He makes the wrong one. He tracks the high flyers while the low group streaks past him, untouched. But the drones aren't home free. Battery warnings are flashing. Amber, critical, they're running on fumes. 
Then, a moment of providence. Thermite drones had melted the track behind the train, and the grass fires create a smoke screen. Thermal imaging can't see through it. For a few crucial seconds, the Russians are blind. The drones punch through the smoke. The fiber optic cables at their maximum range release automatically. The drones are on their own now, but they're too close to stop. 1,500 meters, closing at 27 meters per second. The train engineer sees them, seven black dots against the sky. He slams the throttle past the stop, but the wheels just spin on the polished steel rails. He's actually slowing down. The Panzer tries one last shot, but the drones are now inside its minimum engagement range. $20 million of tech, defeated by basic trigonometry. The guns can't depress far enough to shoot. At the final checkpoint, Russian soldiers open up with everything. Rifles, machine guns, even RPGs. But the drones are using the 600-meter train itself as cover. To hit them, the soldiers would have to shoot through their own ammunition cars. The geometry is perfect. Drone 3's battery dies at 100 meters out. It just stops. But its momentum carries it forward, a silent, deadly glider. Through the last working camera, the operators see Russian engineers desperately trying to decouple the ammo cars while the train is moving. It's impossible. They might as well be trying to untie a steel knot being pulled by a bulldozer. It's over. The lead drone slams into the coupling between the locomotive and the first car. The shaped charge warhead detonates, shearing the massive steel pin like it was tin foil. Boom, 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 impacts ripple down the train. A fuel valve ruptures, brake lines sever, and then wagon 22. Inside are 12 tons of thermobaric rockets. The impact pushes the internal temperature past the ignition point. The world turns white. Wagons 20 through 24 simply cease to exist, vaporized into plasma. The blast wave hurls other cars end over end across the countryside. A mushroom cloud climbs 1,400 meters into the sky. In four seconds, $4,800 worth of modified racing drones just erased $127 million in Russian military hardware. They severed the rail line feeding three entire mechanized divisions. Mission accomplished.